Hello, this is Christophe de Denochin, and I'd like to give you a demo of DB48X via version 0.3 running on the DM42. So I have a DM42 here in its stock state. So I can do RPN operations. And the idea of DB48X is to implement an RPL uh, version of the engine similar to what exists on a trusty HP48. So let me install it by going to the system menu. Then I'm going to select five system, enter system menu, reset to the MCP menu, and activate USB disk. Then I'm going to copy the files On the machine which you can download from the project space and now I can do first load QSPI from FAT which loads uh, the firmware is in two pieces one piece goes into something called the QSPI and the other half uh, goes into the regular program memory so this is the same as for the stock DM42 firmware. So now it flashed the QSPI side and I'm going to go again to this menu, system, enter system menu, reset to the NC, and now load program three. And I load this program called db48x.pgm. Once this is done, you can switch back and forth between dm42 and db48x by repeating that procedure. So it loaded some initial state. Let me clear everything here. So to start, um, the RPL system has uh, a data entry that is similar on the surface to what you're familiar with on the DM42. The difference is that there is an infinite stack. So I can duplicate like this for as many times I, as I want and I can do various operations. So this is essentially how you operate the machine. Um, so you can enter, as we saw, decimal numbers like this uh, by adding a dot. And then you have the usual change of sign, the exponent to multiply by powers of 10, and you have these scientific notations for the numbers. You can also see that there are some separators uh, between digits. So, so by default, it's grouped by three on the left of the decimal mark and grouped by five on the right. Uh, you can change that, we'll see that later. So the big difference between uh, the 48 operation mode and the 42 is that the 48 is based on a command line so it can have multiple operations on the command line so they see that, that the rs key acts as a space and if i do this for instance it's going to enter four numbers in one shot So because uh, we use alpha quite a bit more often in RPL world, we are going to have two shortcuts for alpha. One is the one that you see here, and I can enter ABC, and that creates a name called ABC. Or I can simply hold shift for half a second, and then it shifts to alpha entry as well. So I can easily enter names like this and RPL supports some form of symbolic operations. 
when you enter with shift alpha you can do it a second time and you're going to enter lowercase and if you shift again you're back to non alpha mode and back to uppercase so it cycles between uppercase and lowercase like this then um, because the calculators the hp48 has many more functions than the 42 so you see that it has two shift keys one left one right and this is simulated uh, in the tb48x by having the first shift you see that the indicator shifts to left shift and a second shift gives you a right shift so this gives me more functions per key and we have an overlay the overlay is on the website to document what functions are associated with each key so for instance if i do double shift alpha then i can enter text and it enters alpha mode by default so i can enter a text string like this and there are operations on text like i, I can add two text strings i can add for instance hello uh, where... hello and i add this to my string sorry this doesn't work so you saw how error messages show up and um, i can also multiply a string by a number and that creates a longer string so this one is the same string repeated three times now um, because this is uh, rpl i can also execute a command by typing it on the keyboard so i shift to alpha, alpha mode and let's say let's say that i want a sign a hyperbolic sign so i can type uh, s i n h and that's computing the hyperbolic sign of one two three now because this is a frequent operation you can also use a shortcut which is called the catalog so i type simply s uh, and then plus and you see the catalog appears at the bottom and uh, if i type i now i have all the things that begin with sin and there is sinh here so if i type this i execute the sinh command so the catalog is very useful for a number of things. Let's check that with the version instruction. The plus version. And this gives the version that I'm using on this machine. As you may have noticed just before, if I use the down key, it brings up the editor. So the RPL editor is multi-line and the up, the left, the keys that are up and down are actually moving left and right as you can see if i shift them then i can move up and down if i shift twice i can go to the beginning or the end of the text being edited um, so we have seen these menus and we have a number of menus the main menu is from the sigma plus key and you see that menus will display on three rows the first row corresponds to the direct operation if I hit the key directly. Then if I shift, I go to the second row. And if I shift again, I go to the third row and again like this. So this allows me to select up to 16 features at a time. And uh, when there are more than that in a menu, you see that you have a rows like this on the right that let me go to the next page on the same menu. So in that case, the second page has less things. And this goes to the previous page. In that case, because it cycles, the previous and the next one are the same. And then I can go to a given menu. So when you have a little mark like this at the top of the menu, it means that there is a submenu behind it. So now I'm going to the real submenu and I have various fun functions for real operations. So for instance, I can do 2.3 mod 5.4.5 by hitting the mod key here and modulo 0 0.9 maybe this will be more visible 
Um, <clears throat> so one of the important modes is the mode men the modes menu, the important menu, sorry, is the modes menu that let me uh, select how to display numbers. So for instance, I have the standard fixed mode, which tells me, for instance, three fixed means I have three digits after uh, the comma. And you see that it's it shows as selected now with a little dot and it shows fixed three here. There is a scientific mode. Uh, so if I do four scientific, it's going to, four, to show four numbers after the um, fraction separator and uh, use the scientific notation. And uh, the engineering notation is the same thing, but only powers of three are shown. So if I multiply by 10, you see that I shift to the next power of three, but I don't here, I'm still on 10 power zero, and, and then I'm going to shift in powers of three. So this is much similar to what existed on the HP48 as well, which had these three modes. Uh, there is a new mode though, that is called STD. Sorry, uh, STD here is standard, so doesn't display useless decimals. Uh, but there is an STD mode, uh, sorry, a SIG mode that is new. So you see that STD is the same thing as SIG20. And SIG20 means that we display 20 significant digits but if I want, for instance, to simulate the HP 42, uh, sorry, the HP 48, which has only 12, I can select 12 significant digits. And you see that on the first level, it still does not display the zeros after the, the, the fraction mark. But on large numbers, it only displays 12. This is notably convenient when the numbers get very large. Um, you can also see that uh, the separators can be selected by the modes menu. Uh, so I'm going, for instance, to use a comma as a sorry, a comma as the fractional separator. So this is hard to see, but we now have a comma here, and we can also uh, change the display of the separators that we use. So this is in the next entry here. And I can select, for instance, that I want um, that's that's the one um, that I want, for instance, to have uh, a separator for. So here I have separators every three, or I could decide to have every two. Or every four. And that's the same thing for uh, the fractional part and for base numbers. We are going to see base numbers later. So let me reset to three, which is the default. It looks better. I can also select the separators uh, among others. For instance, I can have uh, a dot as a separator or a tick mark, or an underscore. So I'm going to switch back to the default space. So let's see the recall menu. Uh, that's the variables menu. That's the same thing as this var button on the HP48. So I go to this variable menu, and you see that I already have a few things entered there. Um, so let me store my... Uh, variable here in a name that I will call, for instance, test. So to enter a name, I use this XEQ um, and I'm going to, it's, it shifts to alpha mode automatically and I'm going to type TEST, enter, and then stow, and you see that my test appeared here. So if now I hit this key, my value is recalled on the stack. I can purge this name, so P E. Uh, sorry, S T. Enter, and then I'm going to purge it. Uh, 
and you see that the variable is gone. So we are going to enter a very small program that adds two numbers. So PGM is here and it inserts the chevrons that are typical of uh, programs on RPL. So I'm going to type a program that adds two numbers, for instance, like this. And the program is stored on the stack. To run it, I use RS, which if you're not editing, uh, stands for evaluate. And if I hold like, like this, I, I get the evaluation of the function. So you can see that this is evaluate by trying to type it. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention there is an online help for most features. So if I hold the key like sin, for instance, like this, it brings me to an online help there. And I can go to home to have some details about uh, it's, it's an overview of the project. I can go between links. So the links are highlighted there. And I can follow a link, for instance, to know more about the status of the project. And that will tell you more. I can go back in the history uh, of the help with the back key, or I can exit it with exit. So now we have the ability to write small programs. So now I'm going to write a program that adds one to the number of the stack. And I'm going to store that and call it in curve. And you saw that, see that it appears here. So now if I type one and hit that key, it adds one every time. Now, if I want to recall that number, I shift and you see that there is a little row on the right of Inker there that means recall that value. So that lets me edit it and I can, for instance, replace one with three. And now I can store that by hitting shift twice and you see the row is on the left. That means it goes into the variable. And now if I evaluate it, it has three every time. So this is a neat way, neat way to edit programs quickly. So you see that we have uh, other programs here. So I can recall the factorial program that I created. And you see that there is a, it's a much longer program that evaluates a factorial and I can edit them with the multi line editor the way I did before. Now this factorial program um, can compute factorials of fairly large numbers. So let me do that. And you see that when a program is running, there's a little indicator um, at the top. So if I want to see the complete value, you see that this is a fairly large number. So let me execute a really long program. Uh, so n queens is the, cal the calculation of uh, the, the solution of the n queens problem. That, uh, that, that's a popular benchmark for uh, these, uh, the, the, for calculators. And you see that it's running there. While it's running, there is this little indicator. Now the indicator can change shapes. You see that it either flies like a little triangle. That's when it's computing. And when you, you see the skipping little circle, it means there is garbage collection happening. And uh, that's an indication that your program is likely to run a bit slower. So let's try another menu here. Uh, oh, the, um, while I'm looking at programs, so uh, if I recall the factorial program, for instance, um, and you see how it displays now, and one of the modes that is available lets me change the way this displays. So you see there is this CMD in small there that uses the old historical uh, spelling in lowercase. Um, the, sorry. The 
cmd uppercase here will use an uppercase spelling. This will capitalize each word, uh, but using the historical spelling. <coughs> and this will use a longer spelling if it's available. So you have multiple choices for how you, you want to view your programs. Uh, they are compiled. When you compile, they, they accept any spelling. Um, any spelling will work. So let's switch to the base menu now. Um, the base menu lets you do operations on binary numbers. So you start a binary number with a hash key. And for instance, I can enter 10. And you see that it's 10 in base 16 by default. The base is displayed here. You see it says base 16. Now, when I'm entering such numbers, the cursor shifts to a B, and that tells me I can use the ABCD keys to enter hexadecimal directly. So I don't need to shift to alpha to be able to enter numbers quickly. Uh, so let me illustrate that dynamic aspect of this. One, two, three, A, B, C, D. Now, if I hit the space, it shifts back to D for direct. And you see that now the same A key now brings the real menu as it normally does. You can do operations like addition, multiplication, etc., on uh, base numbers like this. You see that the separator for base numbers, the number uh, between uh, digits is different. It's four by default. Uh, so the grouping is by four. And um, so back to the base number, I can also um, change the base I display this in. So let me try with a smaller number, uh, like uh, one, two, a, f. And I can display that as in base, um, uh, so in, in binary, for instance, or in octal. <clears throat> or in decimal, hexadecimal. But I can actually use any base. So for instance, if I want to do that in, in base 3, I can do 3 base. And now it's shown in base 3. And I can go all the way to base 36. So how do you enter such numbers? Um, you prefix the hash sign with the base number. So for instance, if I want to enter a 17, a base 17 number, uh, and now I can check that if I display that in base 17, it's 1, 2, 3. So let me return to base 16. So you have various uh, uh, operations that are typical of um, so not all operations are implemented, but for instance, I can do an or between these values. And I can uh, do a XOR with this value. Now, these operations are based on a word size. If I do a NOT like this, you see that by default, it's displaying with 64 bit. And that's word size 64 here. But I can decide to shift to uh, word size 16. That doesn't affect the number here, doesn't lose the data. But if I do a NOT here, I'm now going to compute on 16 bits. And I can use uh, larger word sizes, like for instance, 128. And if I do a NOT now, I'm going to have a very long uh, number. So you can compute with uh, base numbers in arbitrary precision like this. So let me return to 64. <clears throat> so um, we have seen that we can enter names with like this. And um, as I mentioned, RPL has support for algebraic expressions. So I can do things like that. And you see that it keeps uh, the operations in a sensible way. And I can edit them the same, the usual way. So I can, for instance, replace the, that by Y. Uh, 
and I can edit expressions like this. Now, if I evaluate an expression like this, nothing happens. However, if I put, for instance, uh, a plus b, so if I shift anything below that, it takes its default in alpha mode. It takes its default value. So I can quickly enter values there. So I can a plus b plus 121, and I store that in x. If I now evaluate, you see that it evaluates with the value that was extracted. The y doesn't exist, so it keeps y. This is about the only um, the, the only kind of I, uh, algebraic expression you can do at the moment. There is no simplification. So the rest of the algebraic engine is not implemented yet. Um, now, an interesting feature of RPL is local variables. So let me do this with, sorry, I need to be in alpha mode. And um, so I use the double shift on the store line to create a local variable. And I'm going to call my local variables A and B. A and B. And now I do a little program with that, which, for instance, does uh, A, B plus and A, B minus. So uh, what this means is that it's going to take two, va two values on the stack, store them in A and B, and then evaluate the body there. So let me store that as a program. Uh, and now if I execute that program with two and three, uh -oh. I think that's, I'll, I'll consider that a bug. Uh, so let me edit that program. And um, I need to have a space here, but that should probably not be accepted. So two, three, and you see that it has computed the two values. So the benefit of local variables is that they are as fast as the stack. They are extremely efficient. You can do plenty of complicated programs with them. Um, and there are notably uh, structures in the go-to menu, for instance, to uh, loop. So if I want to do so, something like 10 times in a row, uh, I can do a start next. And then uh, let me uh, add one to what is on the stack. And uh, let me start with zero. So I, it's a loop that loops 10 times and is going to add 10 times. So there are more complicated loops. Like for instance, I can have a for loop. Uh, so I'm going to do like zero and same thing between one and 10 or one, so zero, sorry, one and 10. I'm going to do a loop with a variable called, for instance, i, and I'm going to add i. Oops. So I'm adding this, the value i 10 times. And now I got n n plus 1 over 2. So these loops are already implemented. And the last topic to see is complex mode. So complex numbers, I can enter a number like 1 plus 2i by selecting the complex menu here. I type i, 1i3 will converse to 1 plus 3i. And I can do 2i4 and add that. 
Um, it also works with symbolic values. So for instance, I can have uh, a, I, B. Oops. Okay, if I keep mistyping it, B. So A, I, B, and then I'm going to do C, I, P, plus, and you see that it's A plus C plus B plus D, I. And I can combine this with other operations. So of course I can do um, other functions, like for instance, I can take the sign or the log. And you see that it's one case where having a smaller significant number of significant digits can be really helpful is to so that it fits on the screen. Um, so let me use a ST of five. Um, so practically all complex operations are implemented except the gamma function and the error function at this point. Uh, they, they will come next. Um, and um, I think, oh yes, you can enter, uh, so numbers in polar form like this. Um, so for instance, if I enter this, um, I negate it. And then I take the square root, and you see that, well, it's practically i. There is a little residue here that probably should not be there. Uh, so let me edit the residue out. And, um, and I think that's... That's essentially, I think we, we've covered most of the features that work today. So I hope you enjoyed this little demo. I'm going to share that on YouTube and uh, please give me your feedback.